Bonjour les amis Bienvenue Welcome to Provence, welcome to the glorious city of Avignon on this beautiful Sunday morning. You see some people are keeping busy here, the local train, tourists on board. I thought I would take you around uh, one of my favorite places in the city and the beautiful city of Avignon before I meet my friend, a local tour guide um, and a Rick Steves tour guide, Nina Sefusati, and I'm hoping to introduce you to her later. So I am standing in um, at the top of the city, actually right above the famous Pope's Palace in Avignon and this uh, glorious virgin you see here on the clock tower of the local cathedral, Notre Dame des Dons. Uh, there's some renovation or restoration going on right now. It seems to be a, a trend in France and especially in cathedrals. I'm going to take you for a short stroll around a beautiful garden uh, known as Le Jardin des Dons, D-O-M-S. All that information will be in the video notes as soon as I come off the air. We'll talk about Avignon in a few minutes, but first let's enjoy those uh, fall colors. Fall has arrived in Avignon as well in spite of the light and the, the blue skies. Now, when we were in Paris, uh, including very recently, I've taken you to uh, gardens, public gardens and parks that were designed in the second half of the 19th century during the Second Empire, when Napoleon III ruled France. And you know, a lot was done to uh, Parisian parks and gardens at the time. And the same thing happened all over France. Just a few weeks ago, I took you to a tour, the city where I live in the Loire Valley, and took you to a Jardin Remarquable de, Fran de France, which is a quality label at the Jardin des Prébondes. And this garden here in Avignon is also uh, considered a Jardin Remarquable de France, which means it's protected. So what you get here are very uh, leisurely vibes, obviously, but also all the accoutrements of a romantic uh, park in the 19th century. In fact, you may not be surprised to hear that the gentleman who landscaped this park at the time, second half of the 19th century, was Barrier des Champs. Barrier des Champs is a pretty familiar name in Paris. If you've joined me on previous virtual strolls at the Parc des Buttes Chaumont, the Bois de Boulogne, uh, where else? Just about every big park in Paris, Parc Montsouris. He worked uh, with uh, Jean-Charles Alphand on the redesigning a lot of the Parisian parks and uh, he's the one who did this beautiful garden. Now the, the, there have been people here since prehistoric times up here above the city of Avignon, this very rocky bluff made of limestone. The gentleman I'm showing you here is part of an exhibit. This photo is part of an exhibit that has really distracted me from the views here today. Um, you may know that Avignon every year holds a special festival, a big theater festival. Um, it's not just theater these days, but it started after World War II. And this is the gentleman who created, who launched this festival inside the Pope's Palace, which sits, uh, the, the Pope's Palace that sits down below. His name was Jean Villard. And he was surrounded by uh, young actors at the time who became huge stars in France, in the theater, in the movies as well. People like Gérard Philippe, Philippe Noiret, um, and women as well, Sylvia Montfort and so forth. So the city of Avignon has de dedicated a photo exhibit to Jean Villard and his troupe at the time, uh, which was known as the TNP. Um, and the festival still runs every July. In fact, if you'd like to come here, it's a bit of a crazy time in town. You need to uh, book a room uh, months and months in advance. And there's so many plays, so many performances that it's actually hard to choose. For now, we are in Avignon, if you just joined, in the beautiful um, Jardin des Dons that sits right above the, above the city and the Pope's palace, redesigned in the 19th century. Romantic garden in the English style. This beautiful light that you find in Provence. 
it's not a too hard of a climb to come here. There are different ways you can come up here. Here is definitely something you would find in many of those uh, public gardens and parks we designed in the 19th century. The romantic grotto and waterfall. Hope the connection is good for you. I know it's early in the day for many of you, but you'll catch the replay later until I can upload them, all these replays into um, on YouTube after the trip. And if you're not uh, aware of this yet, I am traveling around southern France, my native southern France, for the next uh, eight to ten days, based right now in Avignon, and then I'll move on next week to a different city. Yesterday we were in uh, the pretty town of Saint-Rémy-de-Provence. Today we are in Avignon. More photos of this exhibit I was telling you about. So you see the theater actors at the time who helped launch the big festival in Avignon. You see them at work and you see them at play. This is Daniel Gélin, an iconic French actor, very well known in France. He was just having a good time playing soccer. And I think that's dated 1960. So this was in 1960. It was not just work, it was also a little bit of play too. Thank goodness. <laughs> Here's one of them playing pétanque, you know, this, this game that's so popular in southern France. So I must say, I've been here, I've been to Avignon several times as I was touring with Rick Steves. I was here three or four times in 2019 and it's the first time the view, something distracted me from the glorious views I'm going to show you. <laughs> uh, it is this photo exhibit because I kept recognizing so many actors I saw in old movies and plays. And yes, you are correct, it's a beautiful day. So I'm going to take you to two or three different spots right here on this side because this is where the views are. And you'll recognize some landmarks. You've heard of them if you haven't seen them yet. Now you know this is a wine region. You know the Rhone Valley is a wine region. And there is a vineyard here that's been replanted um, about 20 years ago. To, um, and, and gifted to the city of Avignon to commemorate that, the fact that Avignon is at the center of a region that makes excellent wine all along the Rhone Valley. And in fact, the mighty Rhone is right in front of us. I'm going to show you a few more landmarks from the other side. Can you hear the wind in the microphone maybe? Across from us is the city of Villeneuve-les-Avignons, Avignon's neighbor. They kind of grew at the same time. A lot of common history there. And this is the walk you would take to come up here if you came from the Pope's Palace. So you can see it's not too steep. The little train we saw earlier comes up here as well. So let's enjoy those views that we came here to see now that you've taken a quick peek at this beautiful garden. Bonjour friends, thank you for joining us. It's almost lunchtime in Avignon. I'm about to go meet my friend Nina for lunch and um, I thought I would take you on a short stroll before doing that. My Aussie and Kiwi friends must be around at this time. My American friends will catch this later. Unless they are really early risers, of course. Now, of course, <laughs> one of the things that people know about Avignon, whether they've been here or not, whether they can place Avignon on a map or not, is this bridge, or what's left of it, I should say. This is Le Pont saint Benezé. And if you've never heard of this bridge, that's okay. But you've certainly heard the song, the famous uh, children's nursery rhyme, it goes, I hope I'm not going to bring rain clouds by singing. Sur le pont d'Avignon, on y danse, on y danse. Sur le pont d'Avignon, on y danse tous en rond. There's been a bridge here since ancient times. Uh, in fact, back when the Romans were here probably. And then there was a bridge built in the 12th century that uh, had to be worked on quite a bit. Believe it or not, at some point in time, this bridge had about 20 arches maybe 22, I forget. 
and it was beaten up and fixed and restored but it was a strategic bridge and so they kept repairing it and then in the 17th century they just gave up because they had been a very cold winter that year the Rhone River got very mad there were ice blocks on the river and the bridge was so destroyed that year that they never fixed it and today it still sits there everybody knows the nursery rhyme and people can come and visit the bridge and picture what it was like now the bridge crosses an island this island l'île de la Bartelas, is the largest island you will find on the french river anywhere it's a great uh, green space for locals and visitors alike to visit and enjoy for example on a Sunday crazy traffic down below we can look back at the vineyard from here I just showed you a bit of a token vineyard if you will a tribute to all the great wines and varietals in the Loire uh, sorry not in the Loire wrong region in the Rhone region in the Rhone Valley thought I was in Tours for a second. Great wines there too, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to show you one more spot here. So throughout the park, on top of all these beautiful trees, a lot of pine trees, you have statues of uh, people who made a difference locally, sometimes artists, sometimes writers. This gentleman came from Armenia and uh, is a success story. He was an immigrant and made a, a life for himself. And the statue is also a tribute to all the Armenians who were victims of a genocide in 1915. <laughs> and we are not the only ones looking at the view from up here. Look at this old photo probably captured in the 50s or 60s. You see the clothing? There's no date, but this has attracted visitors for a really long time. Typically from up there, you would be able to see the famous local mountain called Le Mont Ventoux. It would come out of the clouds over there, but today it's a little overcast and we can't really see it. The, Les Alpilles, the small Alps, are also there. Now the island I was telling you about, I bet you can hear the wind, it's really blowing. L'île de la Bartelas keeps going like this, you see it's very big. And across from us is a pretty popular restaurant called the Bercaille and the Mighty Rhone, of course, down below here. Across from us, Villeneuve-les-Avignons with a fort you can visit, lots to do and see over there. Le Fort Saint-André, it's played a very important part in French history since the 12th century. And here the tower built by a French king, Philippe le Bel, Philippe the Fair in the late 13th century. So you can understand that uh, Avignon was really a strategic location and the fact that there was a bridge, of course, reinforced that. I haven't talked about the Pope's palace and how um, the Popes uh, lived in Avignon for almost 80 years in the 14th century, which is why we have a Pope's palace here today. And it's a very interesting story of how they came here. Seven Popes lived here in the course of about 80 years and most of them were French. And then the popes went back to Rome, but there was a big crisis in the church at that time. Two more popes ruled from Avignon after that and were sort of competing with the popes in Rome. So if you come to Avignon and take a tour, I'm sure you'll hear the, the whole story of why uh, the popes ruled from Avignon and built this magnificent palace that you can visit today and that theater festival in July actually takes place. The official festival takes place inside the Pope's palace in the big courtyard. And then you have all the off-off plays and performances all over the city. Ah, here is the little train again. It's back. So if you want to come up with the train, that's something you can do. You don't have to walk up. We have quite a few tourists in town, French tourists from what I can tell, myself included, and then we have a lot of Europeans. Time for a quick little hello, as I like to do at the end of live streams. Very windy here, forgive the <laughs> crazy hair. Uh, thanks for joining me at the Jardin des Dons, right above uh, Avignon. 
Um, I'll be showing you more sites of this beautiful city over the next few days until I move on to my next location. And um, all that information will be in the video notes as soon as they come off the air with the replay. I hope you have a great Sunday, friends. A bientôt.